Hey, hey, hey. I'm wearing my NES controller shirt. You know what that means. Another Bill 69 entry. We've been delayed. Let's face it, everything's been friggin' delayed because of COVID, bloody COVID. But Siv and I, my friend Simon, we finally were able to get enough time together with things opening back up and, and being able to see each other again that we finally got our three games in over the last uh, little while. I think my last post was back in December. Uh, so it's taken us up until now, early July, to get the next three games completed. But what a bunch of games they are. First one. Simon's older brother, Josh, actually. This is my first experience with this game. Um, we went and rented it at an independent video uh, rental store that was near my house back when I was in uh, uh, late in public school, early high school, whatever. And uh, I remember the day we rented it and tried it out, and we were both like, what the hell is this game? It's amazing. But it was so hard. And the game in question is for the original Nintendo Entertainment System, and it is called Cobra Triangle. Cobra Triangle, I think, is like a play on the whole Bermuda Triangle mysterious body of water uh, phenomenon. And uh, so in this game, you are in control of a little speedboat and you are faced with uh, making it through 25 levels of the game, uh, which come not necessarily in a linear order. Certain types of levels you can take different branches and depending on which direction you take, you'll, you'll face the other levels of the game in a, in a different order than you would if you took the other branch. Um, like I said, there's 25 total levels, and each level, uh, there's different types of levels. Uh, sometimes you are racing to the finish against uh, enemy speedboats. It's just a simple race. Sometimes you're racing to the finish, um, and uh, the levels are always timed, um, against uh, various elements uh, of nature that are at play against you, like logs that are floating down the river, uh, whirlpools that develop and suck you down, um, different stuff like that. Uh, sometimes you just have to uh, hit a series of jumps that are moving back and forth uh, to get to the end. Uh, in other ones, you have to uh, dispose of mines that are a danger uh, by taking them from one spot to another, but other speedboats are trying to take them back from you sort of thing. Uh, certain types of levels, there's a bunch of swimmers stranded in the, in the middle of the lake or the river or whatever. You have to defend them while enemy speedboats try to take them away and, and make sure you at least keep one <laughs> before the time limit runs out. And uh, and then of course there's lots of boss levels as well. So um, the bosses include uh, you know a, a great white shark, a giant crab, a giant squid, the sea monster sort of thing. And uh, and uh, in terms of uh, pickups along the way, there, there's really only two to worry about. It's pretty simple that way. One ups, which gain you extra lives, which are really important if you can nab them because you've only got a limited amount of lives and contingencies in this game. And like I said, it's really, really hard. Um, and the other one are these little pods that you can collect with numbers on them. And when you collect a pod, uh, on your dashboard at the bottom of the screen, you'll see um, what is it? Uh, turbo, fire, missile, speed. Um, force or something like that so they all correspond to different abilities of your boat that you, you can upgrade over time uh, um, turbo is is your your boat's acceleration fire is the power of of your uh, primary weapon uh, top or speed is your your boat's top speed missile is the ability to gain missiles and then upgrade them and then force uh, grants you a temporary force field so when you collect these pods you'll notice these abilities will highlight. One of them will highlight when you get these pods. So you just press select to lock in an upgrade on that one. Um, so sometimes you prioritize different ones. Uh, we always prioritize the weapons because it's those are really key. Um, the force field we never used. It, it was always weapons first and then your speed. Um, and uh, because if you want to make it through the game, uh, having your abilities upgraded is, is a huge part of it. Um, so yeah, but it's a really weird upgrade system. It's awkward. You're trying to keep your eyes on where you're going and stuff, but at the same time, you got to look at like, okay, which one's up right now? Okay, lock it in, and then you just run into something, right? So, um, so that's why it helps when there's two people playing, because well, the one person's playing, the other guy can be like, okay, it's missile, lock it in, right? You don't have to look at it, right? So, um, really weird scheme, but also kind of cool. Uh, but anyways, if, if you can, you know, take control of that boat, upgrade all your systems, 
and make it through those 25 levels you, you've beaten cobra triangle and if you're able to do that it's no small feat welcome to the club <laughs> it, it is a really hard game but such a weird and distinct kind of game it was released in 1989 developed by rare and it was just such a different kind of game you know like a boat game there, there's not too many of those uh in general you know once wave race came along with the jet skis and stuff but you know how many boat games are there right so and this one was just so cool with you know it's not like a race game or anything which is kind of one-dimensional it was just this weird action adventure game in a speedboat right so we we just rented it on the off chance that oh this looks neat let's see what it is and we friggin loved it but it's one of those games that we've always known since childhood never got near the the finish so it's kind of satisfying all these years later to finally finally put the game to bed so um so that was lots of fun second game up another one for the nes this one released by nintendo in 1990 and this one was huge this was a game changer and uh the game in in question is super mario brothers 3. As you may or may not know, uh, Simon and I beat both the original Super Mario Brothers and number two uh, previously in our Bill 69 journey. And this one goes more back towards the formula of the first game, only it adds immensely to it. Like this was a revolutionary game at the time. Um, so uh, the, the story behind it is that uh, Bowser, King of the Koopas, has invaded the uh, Mushroom World. Um, and the Mushroom World is the seven kingdoms that surround Princess Toadstool in her Mushroom Kingdom. And uh, he, he's, uh, he sent his children, the seven Koopalings, uh, their first appearance in any games, uh, one for each of these kingdoms. And they have kidnapped each kingdom's ruler and turned them, or they haven't kidnapped them, they've turned them into an animal of some sort. And uh, so it's thrown all the kingdoms into disarray. And so Toadstool, Princess Toadstool, contacts Mario and Luigi, of course, um, to come and save the day, basically. So and along the way, she kind of guides them with advice. Um, so, so yeah, you're basically tasked with going through each of these seven kingdoms and saving the day. Uh, but there's actually eight total worlds in this game because as, once you go through each of the seven kingdoms and save them, you then have to go to the dark world. Uh, or the Dark Kingdom, uh, which is Bowser's domain, and face down him for the last time. So there's eight total worlds, and uh, and and th one of the big changes that was introduced in this game was um, a world map. Um, so each world, when you start it, it has a big long map, and you move Mario. You'll you'll know it if you've played any modern Mario games. You move him along the the line along the map to each world, and then enter it from there. And it's not always linear. Sometimes you can skip worlds. Uh, and that sort of thing and, it, and in this game too there's lots of stuff that pops up along the way like there's toad houses and stuff like that where you can play games of memory and games of chance and win upgrades and stuff and there's also like hammer brothers levels that can pop up where you just have to go in and beat two hammer brothers sort of thing so there's lots of stuff that can pop up on the map and uh, the other thing that was uh, really kind of revolutionary about this game was just how many things they added in terms of items and stuff there's all there's the coins still there's the one-up mushrooms there's the regular mushrooms fire flowers that sort of thing but in this game they added a couple different suits there's a raccoon suit which allows you to swing your to spin and swing your tail at enemies you can also fly momentarily with it if you get up enough speed uh, the toad suit helps you or frog suit helps you swim underwater hammer brothers suit allows you to throw hammers um, and then there's also other items like uh, the magic whistle, which can, if you obtain it, you can warp directly to world nine. Um, uh, a little cloud uh, pickup that can um, grant you uh, permanent flight for the rest of the level. Um, and lots of little things like that. And, uh, and also lots of new enemies in this game. There's, there's lots of classics like Bullet Bill, uh, the Goombas, the Koopa Troopers and stuff like that. But a lot of iconic characters made their first appearance in this game. Um, besides Bowser's seven children, the Koopalings, or whatever they call them in future installments. Um, but there was also Thwomp made his first appearance in this game. Dry Bones, Boo. So, you know, lots of new characters entered this game. And, uh, and that became staples in the series going forward. And then uh, new different types of levels. Um, 
there there's it it followed the standard format of there's a desert world, a water world, an ice world, an air world, that sort of thing. But there was also one where it was a giant world, which was different. Um, and uh, of course, there's always the castles that you get in the Mario games as the boss domains. Uh, but in this one, they they uh, enter or they introduced Bowser's airship. So at the end of each world, there was always an airship final battle where you face down the Koopaling boss. And uh, and the music that came along with these airship levels was so... It was kind of like the castle levels in the first game. Like, it was so instantly recognizable, right? And uh, and same thing with these airship levels. So, um, this game just... It just... Uh, when it was released, it just took the world by storm. Um, and everybody knows Super Mario Bros. 3. Everybody has played the game, you know? Um, and it just it, to this day it's still one of the best games ever made and, and is super fun and I honestly never owned the original game I have it downloaded on my Wii from a number of years back but I never owned the actual cartridge for my NES and that was probably because um, it was always really expensive um, I could never find it used anywhere to buy it and, and everybody else had it so if I ever wanted to play it I would just go to somebody else's house right so I was like yeah I could just buy other stuff right so uh, but and, and again, this is another game that, you know, I got near the end as a kid, but never owning it myself up until I had it on the Wii. I never really had that much time to sit down and play it uh, right to the end. So I never actually beat it. So to do it all these years later again with Simon, fantastic. Uh, one of the best games you'll ever play, even if you don't like Mario Brothers for whatever reason. Um, if you want to try and take another stab at it, this is the game. Now, this third game was released in 1993 on the Sega Genesis by Konami, another excellent uh, uh, publisher. Um, and it was an under-the-radar title that I had actually never heard of before I walked into EB Games way back in the day, probably university. Um, I think I didn't get it till a couple years after it was out in university um, when I was in St. Catharines, and uh, I walked in and just saw the cover and was like, I'm taking a chance on this thing, right? It was used, and it was cheap, and it looked cool. And it was Konami, so I was like, uh, I'll take a chance on it. And the game in question is called Rocket Knight Adventures. The moment I got this game back to our house and played it, I was hooked. I was like, this game is awesome. And uh, like I said, it's, it's an under the radar game. Nobody really knows about it um, from anybody I've ever talked to. I was the only one who owned this game and really knew about it. And that was just by chance. Uh, but it is so so good. The story is that uh, it's the kingdom of Zebulos, I think, or Zebulon, or something like that. And uh, uh, for for generations now, um, uh, a long long time ago, uh, the ruler of Zebulon at the time um, locked this uh, powerful ship called the Pig Star away with a magical seal on it because it was so so powerful, and he didn't want it falling into the wrong hands. Warp ahead many generations later, and uh, there's some unrest in the kingdoms around Zebulon or Zebulos, whatever it is. And, uh, and people are starting to thirst for this pig star and for the power it can bring them. So, um, to combat this threat, the Rocket Knight Adventures, or the Rocket Knights, the game is called Rocket Knight Adventures. The Rocket Knights were formed to, to protect the pig star and, and to put down any threats like this. Um, a, a group of, of trained warriors that sport jetpacks and swords. Um, and uh, in this game, you control Sparkster. Uh, he is an opossum. This is all an animal kind of game. Um, who is the leader of the Rocket Knights at this point? Um, he was an orphan, and he was brought into the Rocket Knights by the by the uh, organization's leader at the time, and uh, was trained up and and showed a lot of promise. But years later, uh, one of the Rocket Knights named Axel Gear turned rogue, and is leading the charge now to to obtain the Pig Star. So. Sparkster has to go up against Axel Gear over the fate of the Pigstar. So that's what this game is all about. It consists of seven total stages, which is broken down into little levels or subsections or whatever you want to call them, with each one ending in a boss. Um, so there's lots of boss fights in this game. And uh, it's kind of a, I don't want to say steampunk because I don't even really know what that is, but it kind of, it's a lot of mechanical and, and half biological half mechanical kind of things going on in this game uh, the the enemies you face in this game are uh, kind of hybrids between that they're kind of half biological half machine and they're mostly uh, pig related the pigs seem to be the enemies in this game 
and uh, and that's who you go up against. And they have various contraptions you have to face off against. Uh, the bosses though are primarily fully mechanical, and, and you'll face off against like a giant uh, robot sea dragon, um, uh, a big centipede, uh, this kind of train tank thing, and lots and lots of other ones because there's tons. Um, and for the most part, the game is is a side-scrolling platformer kind of format. But every once in a while, you get a level where y you get a permanent boost on your jetpack and you fly through the level, uh, uh, always heading to the right um, at high speed, and you, and you take the level on that way. Um, in terms of Sparkster's moves, they're pretty basic. He basically can jump, and he can slash with his sword. However, if you hold down the... Uh, the attack button um, you'll boost his his rocket pack and then you can either if you're stationary when you let it go he'll just do the spinning attack in place or if you're holding the directional button in any of the eight directions he'll then launch in that direction and uh, do damage to any enemies he'll hit he hits along the way while doing so and that moving like that also helps um, in levels where he has to climb and get to high places or in levels where he's in a hurry like if somebody's chasing him or if the level's moving down really fast and you can get crushed sort of thing so you have to use that to your advantage uh in terms of pickups there are diamonds which give you points and if you earn a certain amount of points you'll get a free life there's one-ups which make the free lives a lot easier and uh, then there's two types of food pickups uh there's apples which replenish a little bit of his health meter and then bananas which give a much uh, more substantial uh, influx of energy on his meter there so um so not a lot of pickups to be had pretty simple gameplay um but just so so fun and uh like i said this game was released by konami and i read afterwards that um a guy from konami that worked on a couple of the Contra games, uh, Hard Corpse and The Alien Wars, worked on this game. And you can really tell, especially with the explosions and the sounds of the explosions and stuff, like there's a lot of similarities between that and those Contra games. And it's just, uh, and you know how much we like Contra. I mean, we've got three or four Contra games on this list already that we've completed. So um, so this game just was just a, a, a sneaky come from out of nowhere under the radar hit that just I added to my collection just by chance on the look of the cover and it has become a staple on, on my Genesis collection and uh, and this is another one like Super Mario Brothers um, I, I always got near to the end um, but could never quite close the game out so putting our talents together all these years later uh, has paid off for me and Simon yet again because it's another game that took a l many many years decades to beat but we finally got it done. So um, that is all for, for this time around. Those are the three games we've recently beaten. And I believe that brings my total our total up to 48 games completed, which means we got 21 left to go. So we're now in the process of really paring down the games we really want to beat to end this list because we each have games that are really important to us that we want um, to be on this list and we were saving for near the end because because they are so special so we're in the process of doing that and uh, and there'll be definitely be some cool ones coming in the future so uh, but who knows with everything in the world going on the way it is uh, when our next post will be but uh, you can guarantee that we're working on it